The Electronics Mac 17 is a new gaming laptop featuring powerful hardware in a thinner and lighter chassis. But just how well does it actually perform in games? I've tested 20 different games at all setting levels and also compared it with other laptops to help you decide if it's worth it. My configuration of the Electronics Mac 17 has an Intel i7-9750H CPU, NVIDIA RTX 2070 graphics, there's no Max-Q here, 16GB of memory and dual channel, and a 17.3 inch 1080p 144Hz screen. You can change the specs a bit when ordering. It's also available with GTX 1660 Ti or RTX 2062. You can find updated prices linked in the description. It's basically a larger 17 inch version of the Max 15 I recently tested. I'll be comparing the two in a future video, so make sure you're subscribed for that. The control panel software lets you select different performance modes. I've done all testing with turbo mode, which enables electro boost, and I had fan boost enabled for best results. There's a minus 0.05 volt undervolt to the CPU by default too, and my unit has stock thermal paste. What makes the Max 17 impressive is its size and weight. At under 2cm thick, it weighs around 400 to 500 grams, or around a pound less than other powerful 17 inch options, like the Razer Blade Pro 17, Gigabyte Aero 17, or Asus Zephyrus GX701. We'll only be covering gaming performance in this video, so if you're new to the channel, you'll definitely want to get subscribed for the upcoming full review. Let's start out by going through all games at all setting levels, then afterwards we'll see how the Max 17 compares with some other laptops. Red Dead Redemption 2 was tested using the game's built-in benchmark tool. High settings was still able to give decent average frame rates, considering this is a resource-heavy game. Battlefield 5 was tested in campaign mode. I've got the results with RTX enabled, shown by the green bars, and RTX off, shown by the purple bars. It was pretty playable with RTX on, though as a first person shooter game, you'll probably want the higher FPS that can be obtained with RTX off, which ran much better. Control was also tested with and without RTX enabled. The game still plays okay with lower frame rates for the most part, so RTX even with the highest setting was usable, but I personally preferred high settings with RTX off which averaged above 60 FPS. Apex Legends was tested with either all settings at maximum or all settings at the lowest possible values, as it doesn't have predefined setting presets. The 144 FPS frame cap was being hit at minimum settings, and even maxed out it wasn't too far behind this. Call of Duty Modern Warfare was tested in campaign mode, and I've also tested it with the settings either maxed out or at minimum. Minimum settings was close to 100 FPS in this test, however it still played pretty well even with everything at maximum. Borderlands 3 was tested using the game's built-in benchmark, and even with the highest setting preset, we're pretty much averaging 60 FPS which is a great result for a gaming laptop, and is definitely due to the RTX 2070 graphics we've got here. Shadow of the Tomb Raider was tested with the built-in benchmark, and the results were alright, but I'll show you how different laptops compare in this game and some others soon. Ghost Recon Breakpoint was also tested with the benchmark tool, and this was another demanding game that was still able to surpass 60 FPS even with the highest setting preset due to the 2070 graphics that we're dealing with. Fortnite was tested with the replay feature, and as a less demanding game, Epic settings wasn't too far behind the refresh rate of the screen, so no problems playing at all, while medium settings would give us even 1% low performance above the screen's refresh rate. Overwatch is another less demanding game and was tested in the practice range. Again, even with the Epic setting preset, the frame rates are very high, with the 1% low not that far below the refresh rate of the screen. CSGO was tested using the Uletical FPS benchmark, and the results aren't too different compared to other laptops with lower tier GPUs. This test seems to be more CPU heavy, and once we're at frame rates this high, there's usually more of a benefit seen from laptops that allow you to disable Optimus, which unfortunately the Max 17 does not support. Dota 2 was tested playing in the middle lane, and as is typically the case with this game, higher end graphical power in most laptops hardly makes a difference as the limitation tends to be the i7 CPU. Regardless, normal results here, which means it's performing extremely well. Rainbow Six Siege was tested with the built-in benchmark using Vulkan, which was recently added to the game, 
If you saw my recent blog post at jareds.tech, I mentioned I'll be moving to Vulkan for future testing, as it tends to perform better than the older DirectX 11 implementation. I'll leave a link to that post in the description if you're interested. Anyway, excellent results here. Metro Exodus was tested using the built-in benchmark. Most parts of the game perform a fair bit better than this, so don't take these results as a good indication of what to expect throughout the entire game, it's more of a worst case. The Division 2 was also tested with the built-in benchmark, and the results here seem better compared to most other laptops. The 1% low in particular isn't as low as it usually is, so it appears that the RTX 2070 is providing some benefit here. PUBG was tested using the replay feature. Even at ultra settings, it was possible to pass 100 FPS. However, we could achieve this in 1% low performance with the low setting preset, which would deliver a smoother experience. Assassin's Creed Odyssey was tested with the built-in benchmark, and as a resource-heavy game, the frame rates weren't that high with the highest setting presets. However, hitting 60 FPS in this test for a gaming laptop at very high settings is a fair result. Far Cry New Dawn was also tested with the game's benchmark, and for the most part, the results aren't really that much different when compared to most other laptops I've tested with lower GPUs, as it seems to be more limited by the i7 processor. The Witcher 3 was playing fine even with max settings. I don't think it really sees a benefit from super high FPS. However, stepping back just one level would perform a fair bit better without too much loss to visual quality. F1 2019 was tested using the game's benchmark tool, and although max settings had decent average FPS, simply by stepping down one preset to high settings was able to score about the same for 1% low than the average at max settings. Let's also take a look at how this config of the Electronics Max 17 compares with other laptops. Use these results as a rough guide only, as they were tested at different times with different drivers. Starting with Battlefield 5, I've got the Max 17 highlighted in red near similarly spec'd machines. In this game, the performance was about the same as the smaller Max 15, which is just below it in this graph. The results are somewhere in between the other 2070 laptops I've tested, so fair results considering the Max 17 is on the lighter side. These are the results from Far Cry 5 with Ultra settings in the built-in benchmark. This time the Max 17 saw an improvement over the Max 15, and was now actually beating all of the other 2070 laptops that I've done this test with. The 1% low is right up there too, coming in third out of this selection. These are the results from Shadow of the Tomb Raider with the built-in benchmark at highest settings. Again, the results were a little ahead of the smaller Max 15 with same specs, and close to the heavier and larger GP75. The ASUS GX502 seems to perform better though despite being smaller, most likely due to the ability of bypassing Optimus. Overall, the Max 17 is performing quite well, and for the most part, a bit better than the smaller and lighter Max 15 with same specs, owing to the additional cooling space. I'll go into more depth on that topic when I do the dedicated comparison video. If you're looking for a 17-inch gaming laptop, the Max 17 appears to be delivering on the performance front compared to the competition. It's performing quite close to the heavier GX701 and Razorblade Pro 17, all while being about 20% lighter, so a more portable option. Let me know what you thought of the gaming performance from the Electronics Max 17 gaming laptop down in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider getting subscribed for the full review to see everything this gaming laptop has to offer.